thing. Keep on eating. I'll just talk while you eat. An idea that Banda and I had about, we, we had always been talking about what can we do to all get under the same umbrella with our ideas. I'm talking about like healthy clay, uh, made in clay, uh, stay in clay. Uh, Clay County Cruisers, all right. Clay County Cruisers. Uh, all these small clubs that that have been working in the same direction, but we don't, we're not all in touch with each other. We don't all know what direction we're going in. So we talked about having a tourism task force and inviting everybody to it. And uh, what was the day we going to have that? Um, we'll have the first meeting in January. Dr. Mike Davis is going to be the moderator for that meeting. And he has secured the EKU uh, college up here for that meeting. He's going to get us back. He's going to get back with a meeting date on uh, Monday. So we'll be at EKU. Yeah. And it, it, anybody that you know that's been doing any work like we've been doing, like just towards the betterment of the county, the city, invite them to it. But of course, we will publicize it. And we think that. That way we can all, I mean, we, we can probably just do it on the chart of, wow, uh, this committee do this, this committee is interested in doing this, that way we'll, you know, we'll all have a clear picture of what we're going to do. Right, no duplications because, and, and maybe even promised neighborhood might want to be a part of this because we have found ourselves duplicating a couple of things with them, so, so we might want to include some of them in it. Gary Barnby, I, I want to brag on Gary. He's been such an asset to us. Uh, I've been passing around the, the paper that he put together for us about the swinging bridge. So, uh, but if you, if you want to take a look at this, I mean, Gary had already done, I, I was thinking about what we want for a brochure, and he'd already done all the work and had it there and had copies of us to hand out. So, so basically what we want to do is become the land of swinging bridges. And uh, I'll talk more about that later. Another thing we need to talk about, I know Ron and Gail are going to talk about the festival. I do want to tell you that Betty Meredith is like, she is the fundraiser extraordinaire. She can raise money. We decided to have, you know, and we need to talk about, you know, we planned on having a festival at the Pioneer Village. And, then uh, uh, Clay County Cruisers and Gary came up with this idea of having uh, uh, from I guess it's from April was it from April or May. Well, we can go we can go either in April or May anymore. <clears throat> I need to know early enough to where that I can start advertising. So if we decide to go April, we normally normally I start in May. Yeah, that's what we were thinking was May. May through October. May through September, October. May through October, having one festival per month. So, and they, they called it Southeast Sundays. It would be on Sunday. And they've already picked out a day that doesn't uh, uh, go against uh, the Somerset Car Show or the London Car Show. They picked it you know, a different day, so we will be in competition with them. And like from one o'clock to right from that. back to church, so we can put yeah. time to go to church, and then started at one o'clock till dark. And so what we need to decide on is if we want to have, if we want to just have those little festivals every month, do we want to have the little festivals and a big festival? <coughs> that, that's something we need to discuss. So, so Mark, 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 well, anyhow, what I'd like to see happen every dog possible is like Memorial Weekend. Their car show will fit in with Memorial Weekend. We have a block party about across the bridge over the, the Warriors Trail where they can come across the bridge and everything would fit in together. That's what I really would like to see happen. If it would be everybody work together to shoot for Memorial Weekend. Maybe if the car show is going to be Memorial Weekend, I'd have to look at the calendar, Betty. I haven't made the schedule up yet. I don't know if it falls on Memorial Weekend for that month or not. We're doing the fourth Sunday of every fourth month, Sunday, correct? Right. It'd be the fourth Sunday fourth of every Sunday, month. Fourth Sunday of every month. So it should fall, yeah, pretty close to Memorial Weekend. We'll work that all together. Yeah, having one 
along with the car show and the other stuff going on. Right. Yeah. Like, the, the more you got going on, the better. I mean, everybody's able to find something that they like. I am Gary is waiting to finalize the brochure. You know, Terry Gray volunteered to publish a thousand brochures for us through EKU. And uh, Gary was waiting for us to decide what we were going to do. We were going to have one big festival. We were going to go with the Southeast Sundays before he finalizes the brochure to send to Terry and Terry. So that's something we need to go ahead and decide on. We got from Scott Madden on the Madden Hall going into town for a mural. So I guess we probably need to be thinking about what we want our mural going into town to say. And what do we want to own? Something, I guess, if you get ideas, we can jot them down and, and maybe talk about it. It will be the Welcome to Manchester. Right, Welcome to Manchester, which is sponsored by the city company. Land of Schwingen Bridge. We had a, we had a very productive Chamber of Commerce meeting yesterday. I got an idea when I found out that this gentleman was coming to our, to our chamber meeting that, would you like to stand up and introduce yourself? <laughs> I gotta spin around. Um, my name's Luke Ramsey. I'm with Kentucky Highlands up in London, and uh, I really came. I came to the chamber meeting, and then Ron told me about this meeting, so I thought, why not? Um, but have you guys seen the paper today, and you saw about the Promise Zone? Yeah. So there's money coming this way. Um, and How is this money? We don't know yet. <laughs> Nobody knows. It. Um, it, it will be in the form of grants. It will be in the form of tax uh, tax credits and deductions. Um, but we don't know for sure how it's going to come this way. Uh, there's five zones, and this part of the country of the state is the only rural uh, of those. So we've got a real opportunity. Now we had been working on a program called eCoaches. Uh, for a while. E-Coaches is basically, I need you all. You guys are clearly doing what you need to be doing already. Uh, but we, we've got a lot of resources, both through the Promise Zone and through other, uh, other channels to help this region um, start businesses. I mean, this whole tourism thing just fits perfectly in that. Uh, so I'm just here to say, introduce myself, say, get in touch with me. We're going to be doing some training on what Kentucky Highlands does and what programs are available, what resources are available, and we'd like you all to be part of it. Uh, so on the 20, was it wrong, 27th? 27th. 27th at the community center uh, from 10 until 2. I would like to get RSVP so I can order enough food for everybody. So I'm just going to stick a lot of yeah, business cards at either end of the table, tables and you all pass them down. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm here for. So. It's, it's really just going to be introducing you all to what we do, uh, showing you all, you know, we've got programs, we've got training, uh, was it, I can't remember, was it you who mentioned about restaurants? Yeah, yeah so, you know, the idea of, of starting restaurants in, in downtown came up, and we've got that sort of training programs available, so we'll just teach you about what grants are available, what, what training programs are available, what resources are at your disposal. And then the hope is that you guys will go out and share that information with your neighbors. So, 27 Community Center, 10, 10 to 2, contact me if you want to come. All right? That's it. Who is it? So my idea, if you haven't seen Ron Murray's video, was I, I have just been trying to think of something that was very doable for most people, uh, some kind of business we could put in that might have a chance of survival. And, you know, we don't all have to buy gifts, we don't all have to buy antiques, but we do have to eat. So restaurants came to mind. We've got a restaurant going in our building right now. What's going in there? Why don't we have it? It's a DNR Bar and Grill. And they're, they're just two little guys trying to open a restaurant right there where Twister Sisters was. And I'm sure they'd take all the help that they could get. They know right. nothing about nothing except cooking. They can cook. <coughs> there, there you go. Give them my card. Okay. Corbett said he wants the chamber to get more involved in doing things like with us, which made me really happy. So I know we're going to have the support of the chamber, whatever we do. So, I was 
looking at maybe having a, a, a restaurant association and they could like all get on the same page with what they were going to have and, and just coordinate it and, and and everybody root for each other and help each other be successful because as long as people are working against each other nothing is ever going to happen that's good but if everybody pulls together good <coughs> things can happen we can all be successful that, that's my idea so um, maybe somehow we could we could offer some kind of incentive packages to to people that want to open restaurants you know i don't know that that would be a good incentive that we could train on you know maybe, and maybe we could all sit down together and figure out some other incentives we could offer you know maybe get the building owners together and work out some kind of rent thing you know just we just have to put our heads together and think about that. Well, I think that's one thing you need to think about in Clay County because everybody that's got a building to rent that's astronomical and nobody can afford it, they're out of business before they get started. Right. So that's my idea. And, and, you know, that's what we're out here for. Anybody that has a good idea, stand up and say it. I'm going to let you guys talk about Southeast Sundays. <laughs> Could, could I say a few things first? Sure. I know most everybody here, but for the people that don't know me, I'm Jack Roberts, Clay County Cruiser. Uh, I'd like to try to tell you a little bit about the significance of what we're trying to do here. Most of you are familiar with Somerset. The car show weekend, Somerset has one weekend a month, car show. They started that back about 14, 15 years ago. And I got involved with that. They were having about 300 cars a month showing up at that event. And I started promoting it on Hot Rod Hotline, which is the world's largest online rodding magazine. And uh, the first thing you know, we started drawing cars from seven and eight states surrounding Somerset. And the numbers rose to somewhere 14, 1,500 cars a month. Now, Somerset is situated a little bit differently than we are. We'll never be able to accomplish what Somerset does because we don't have the infrastructure for it. Somerset provides a whole weekend for these people coming from Ohio, West Virginia, Indiana, Illinois, Atlanta, Georgia, all over the country. They have the motels and they have the restaurants and they can provide that type of service to us. Now, I was privy to sit in on a business meeting in 2007 when the uh, government leaders and the car club were discussing figures and what it amounted to to Somerset in tourism dollars. And at that time, they were quoting a figure like $11 million annually. Now, $11 million annually to a city like Somerset, I wonder if it's And this was at a time when they had lost their lake travel because the lakes were down. The government was redoing the dam. And this was far more than what they were getting off the lake. Now, we will never be able to do what Somerset is doing in the amount of dollars simply because we don't have the infrastructure to do it. But can you imagine what, if we brought in $100,000, $200,000 a year into our economy, at our level, what it would do to our community? Okay, it would raise the standard of living for everybody involved. And that's basically what we're looking to do, is try to raise the standard of living. Make a place where we can grow, where our kids can stay when they get older. Right now, we're losing all of our brightest young people because we don't have employment. I'm, I'm a victim of that. I had to leave at an early age because there was no employment. Once I got old enough to retire, I came back because I love it. This is my home. We need to stop losing all of our bright young kids. We need to provide something for them. And in order to do that, we're going to have to start out small. And like Margie was talking a while ago, we can't keep little groups going in different directions, not knowing what the other's doing and not working together. We've got
got something here that we can work with. We've just got to manage it and organize it. And uh, like the uh, empowerment zone, the Obama deal that you're talking about, that can mean a lot of money for us. But we're listed, we're one of the eight counties listed in that uh, promise zone or whatever it's called. But we need to organize it. Like tourism, we're suited for tourism. But we need to get it organized to a point to where we've got one group controlling the dog. One group that give us a larger voice, a stronger voice, and we can be heard more easily to go after grant monies and other amenities. And uh, we talked in the chamber meeting yesterday, what we need to do is organize and get this thing rolling. We've got a good start for it. We've got the basics in place. Stay in play has, has done amazing things. They've done good things. They've got a track record and a good history. We don't need to tear it down and start fresh. We need to take what we've got and build into it. And uh, the Clay County Cruiser, we've been doing this for eight years. 100% of every dollar we bring in in tourism money stays in the county. We don't have any vendors from out of our county setting up taking the dollars that come in. We normally draw anywhere from 50 to 150 cars at each event we have. Now those people are only here one day. During that one day they buy gas, they buy food, they spend money for whatever. They got time, they could do a little shop or whatever. <clears throat> it doesn't seem like a lot, but it adds up over a period of time. <laughs> this is what we got to concentrate on, small things. We can't reach out and grab the big, the whole dealer at one time. We've got to work and build up to it. And uh, the Clay County Cruiser, we're willing to work on whatever we got to do to make this thing work. This is my home. Your home. We need to build. Bravo. Well, the one thing that we need is our leaders to work together. That, that's the key. What I'm trying to get pointed. That's right. right. Well, we've got our judge right here. We've got our mayor right here. Yeah. And if they don't work together, we're going to get out and fight them. It, <laughs> it, it, it most certainly, it most certainly involves cooperation with the county and the city governments working with us. That's the key to Somerset's success. Without the cooperation with the city and, and the county governments in Somerset, they could have never grown to what they are. So it requires a, the cooperation of everybody. We don't separate Manchester from Clay County. You can't do that. They're, they're together and they've got to work together. Yeah, we got the power established. There you go. We've got the president of the Senate. Absolutely. And here's the thing about it. We need to take advantage of that while we have that opportunity. When you were in there, we needed to have taken advantage of you and Robert. Yeah, we did. So, you know, I predict Robert is going to go farther. But we need to take advantage of it now. We've got Robert and, and he is more than willing to help us with anything that we want to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But we have to organize and we have to get it together. And Margie, if I might, uh, on that note, that's a really good point. But uh, And also, I remember when Vaughn was here last year, many of you were around the table when Vaughn Grisham came. And one of the things he said is it's still a very positive sign the more different civic groups there are. And I understand there is a need for organization and all that and to know what everybody's doing, but he said, he, if you remember this great big arrow, and within that arrow, there was all these little arrows, and they were some were a little bit pointing, but they were still all going the same way. And so a town that starts to develop all these little civic groups, that's more than what, there's a bunch more things springing up than what there used to be. And there's all this good stuff being done, and so, 
off of this is this and this is this and so that's just a healthy thing for a town yeah. to have active civic groups whatever they are if they're about absolutely so that's that's a good sign we still have a few people that's, that's not under the glove yet we've not got them like mental health showing any support yet hospital 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 school system of course you've got people here from the school system but they need to make sure that they're the people that the school systems we need to get Amy to start coming don't yes, we? we need to get Amy on that note I, on that note I have we have been uh, they told us any time we want to be with the Clay County School Board, we're very welcome to come and meet and they've offered us sponsors and girls. And so it's kind of not an obligation to us, but it's partly our responsibility to go to the next meeting. Well, just follow the meeting. We just got to show them that we are together as a group and we're. That's right. We're going to make something out of this county. We, like Jack. Like I said a minute ago, I mean, most of us grew up here, not everybody, but, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I could have went anywhere and lived comfortably. I'm like him. I come back home, and I'm, you know, I'm, I want to see the county do good. We want to see our kids stay here. That's the big thing, but we got to have something for them. And just this little thing that we've done, that's the reason I jumped on board with this stay in play. Plus, you know, I know the people, friends with most of them, and we're putting the rubber to the road. And we're not gonna we're not gonna stop. These people they're gonna get on board or they're gonna be out. You know, we're gonna get people that'll work, that'll that that are positive people, not in it for their self interest. I I don't need any money. I've got plenty of money to do me the rest of my life. I'm not bragging, the Lord took care of me. Uh, I'm not in it for the money. I, you couldn't pay me a penny to do nothing. I'm only in it for the betterment of the county and that's what most of these people's in it for. I mean, I, I, I'll say everyone that I know is in it right now. That's what they're in it for. No fame, no fortune, no, you know, I don't want to be the governor of the state or representative or nothing. But I'm glad that we got people that we know that are in these positions that's willing to help us. And like, like Jack said, we got Robert right now. He is so on board with us right now. Most of you know what the situation is. What's getting ready to happen with some things, but uh, it is prime time. I'm going to put a plug in for the lake real quick. You're talking about Somerset's Lake. We have got the best place in the state to build a lake. I'll relocate it. We've drawn up the plans. Big Double Creek. There's not a grave in it. There's nobody lives in it. We already own the land. It blown. We already, It's ours. There's a, well, I will, we'll take care of you too. Yours is on the other side of the hill though. You ain't going to be in there. Um, this thing, uh, there's enough timber in it. It's not been timbered since 1920. There's enough timber to pay for it. They got to cut the big timber, you know, make the lake. It's uh, the main channel is 110 feet deep. It's going to be be able to raise any kind of fish there is that's native to Kentucky, musky, walleye, the whole deal. Three and a half miles long. I won't go into a whole lot of detail, but being the judge is working on it right now, getting a lot of support, getting ready to really kick this thing off. Uh, so, you know, things like that. We are going to have a lake. It takes a while to build a lake now. I may be gone before it's completed, but that lake is going to come about. If there was ever a place meant for a lake to be there, and I know there's a few people against it, but a lake is considered an improvement on, on land. There's, it, it overshadows all the other things that can be done with with government land. So they say, yeah, you know, it's Daniel Boone Fort, it's government land, but it's an improvement. You know, most lakes are in, they have been government federal land and given back to the states and made state parks. Who knows, this one might turn into one. What I'm saying is things like that, this lake, uh, I feel very, very good it's going to happen. I really do. Uh, we've got Mitch on board right now. we got Rand Paul. I think Hal's going to be not, we've not been able to talk to Hal much about it. But talk this thing up, you know. It, that's going to be a big thing. We can sell, we can sell five or six million dollars worth of water revenue coming back into the county every year out of this lake. And it's got such a watershed, you could go a whole summer without rain and it would never drop six inches. That's what a watershed there is over there. You know anything about those mountains in Redbird? 
So it, it's purest water that could ever be, it'll be the cleanest lake in the state. There'll nothing compare to it. There's no way any any kind of rubbish, trash, pampers, or milk jugs can get in it. Nobody lives there. You know, we'll keep it clean as a group. Uh, it'll bring boat builders, uh, dock, at least one good sized dock. Uh, campsites all the way around the, the, the bridge, all the way around it. Uh, 200 feet down. It'll be one of the shortest, but it's going to be a tall down, 200 feet. It'll be one of the least expensive dams that was ever built in the state of Kentucky. Least cost. So it's all a plus. Uh, if you've not heard about it, uh, we are in the you know in the beginning stages of it. But I'll just I'll drop that there. But we have had an official map made about it. Uh, we're gonna put one up in the judge's office here in the next few days. But uh, we are gonna have the lake. It's exactly ten times as big as Beach Creek. How many acres is that going to be? It's, it's 350 acres, a little bit over 350 acres, three and a half miles long, down to the head, and it's it'll be one of the deepest lakes in the county. It'll, it'll, will, will it be large enough to uh, support boating? Absolutely, boating? gas motors. Absolutely. That's yeah. That's what we need. We need houseboats and it'll support houseboats. Yeah. It'll support any kind of watercraft. Except ocean vessels. Yeah, yeah. Any kind of lake craft there is, it'll support it. it the main channel is going to be over a thousand feet wide. Mm -hmm. Right there where the little park is, where they let the trout out, yeah. right there will be the widest part of the lake, of course. But right in there, you talk about a hundred foot deep lake for two thousand feet, mm -hmm. that's a big lake. It's going to be a lot of water. Okay. But I just, I just wanted to mention that. Gail might talk to you about the. Uh, uh, the festival thing here this minute. We've not got a whole lot done on that, but uh, we are going to have a nice stage. Uh, that money's coming. It won't be enough to build it all initially, uh, but it'll build, it'll build three fourths of it. The grant money we're getting from Brushy for it. And I, I'll have to say this now: the fiscal court was good enough to let us have that money for a stage in the city. So I just want to put a plug in for Joe. He, he, he said they'd be willing to do that, to give their money to the Saltworks cabins over there to build up the state. I mean, that's, you know, he agreed to do that. I think that we should commend him for that. Yeah. We, we, and we do have money that we can help in state place account that we can help with the building of the, the shed, the, the stage. Let go. Margie. So. Margie. Beth. We need to get enough people involved in this thing to where that we can branch out in different areas and get different things going at the same time. And let it all come together to make a greater good. Just like your lake you're talking about, there's a lot of other things that we can do that, that create tourism. We might as well face the issue that tourism is where we're going to have to That's go. It. That's it. We don't have the infrastructure for industry, and we're never going to get it. And the state's got plenty of money for tourism right now. Right. And, and we need to sell our God-given country. That's our beauty, you know. That's what we need to do, and we need to promote it in a way that's going to make people want to come and see it. Right. But we need to get different enough people involved to where we can get different diverse groups not put all the regs in one basket but spread them out in different directions you know to where it when you say go to manchester or go to clay county to to spend a weekend you're going to have a lot of options to choose from for entertainment and that's what people are interested in is entertainment and we can do that when we start and we can do it well, we've got the entertainment right here in this county. I mean, we got people well, that are We just need to develop it and organize it. 